ESPN's documentary about the hit and run at Goodall Park in 2018 where Douglas Parkhurst was killed features the first on-camera interview with Carol Shero. She's the woman from Sanford who was ultimately found not criminally responsible for his death. 207's Beth McAvoy continues her conversation with the journalist behind the documentary, Tom Juno. On June 1st, 2018, Douglas Parkhurst, the man who killed a little girl in a hit and run, was killed in a hit and run. The driver of the car that ran him over was Carol Sharrow. Since she was 18 years old, Carol Sharrow had struggled against the disease that had her in its clutches. You went to Riverview and met with her in Augusta. What was that experience like? Uh, it's an intense experience. When you go to Riverview, it's so, so you're we're talking about the, sta the state psychiatric hospital. It's a modern facility, but it is, is right next to the old hospitals, the, the, the main state insane hospital, which is, you know, looks like it's straight out of a Stephen King novel. So you, you go and meet her and, you know, in this kind of up-to-date place, but there are ghosts around and you can feel them. What is your diagnosis? Um, bipolar type one. Bipolar type one um, is a chemical imbalance in the brain and the type one of bipolar diagnosis is geared more towards the mania aspect of bipolar. If not taken care of or if you're unhealthy, um, can get, can spiral um, out of control. Seeing Carol was, was an education in what mental illness is, because if you look at the, the tapes of Carol on the night that she drove the car in the field and, and killed Douglas Parkhurst. Inform me that you're under arrest. For what? And then you look at Carol Shero when I interviewed her at R Riverview. I mean, they're, they're like two different people. How are you feeling today as, we, as we speak? I feel well. Carol is, is the person of all of the people that I talked to for the story that I'm most in touch with. I called her shortly before um, we started having this interview. I've always been in touch with Carol because she's been so honest and forthcoming about herself and about, about what mental illness is and, you know, what she has to do to stay healthy. And she really, she's taught me a lot. She's a remarkable person. Juno spent two years investigating the story and made five trips to Sanford. At the end of the story, something happens that would not have happened if it had been six months of reporting or a, even a year of reporting. What happened at the end of the story is that a member of the Parkhurst family apologized to uh, a member of the Ashby family, which is something that the Ashby's had been waiting for you know, not for two years, but for 50 years. We need to fix what's broken and we need to somehow make amends with the Ashby and Parker's family. That's one thing that they looked for was an apology. And my grandfather was too stubborn to do that. It was the length of time that ESPN allowed me to do the story that made that possible. And, you know, being part of that, being part of that historic apology really just meant, meant so much to me at the time. Someone needs to do it. I'm the one. 19-year-old Douglas Parkhurst III wanted to do what his grandfather could never do. He wanted to face the Ashby's. The problem was he didn't have a car or a driver's license. I had started something the first day I began connecting the dots between Goodall Park and Fulton, between the Ashby's and the Parkers. I too felt called upon to finish it. So I drove Doug from Sanford, Maine, 360 miles to Fulton, New York. Juno refers to Douglas Parkhurst's grandson, Douglas Parkhurst III, as D3. When D3 got out of that car and, you know, walked to Darlene and made that apology that took 50 years to make, 
I mean, I'm not, I'm not much of a, of a praying person, but I said a prayer and it was, it was a, it was really a powerful moment for me. And I am truly sorry about, you know, everything that happened. I believe I that. I could not, yeah, I couldn't fathom that. <laughs> Who is the hero at Goodall Park? <laughs> well, there are so many. <laughs> You know, there are basically three families that are connected by really brutal tragedies. And yet, like, everybody I talked to for this story was in their own way remarkable. I mean, Dar Darlene Ashby has been dealing with something that's unspeakable for 50 years. She's just a stalwart, you know, human being. All of the Parkhurst people, including, you know, of course, D3. I mean, he had like a... a preternatural sense of poise and self-possession whenever it came time to like say the right thing d3 this kid <laughs> you know who worked at the burger king on the on the highway found a way to say it he just said remarkable things all along whenever it was time to say it and he finally of course said the right thing to darlene ashby which is what made the story what it was and plus, you know, Carol Shero, who has really become a friend to me. And so, you know, it's just, that's a rare, that's a rare occasion when you go into a, a tough family story and you meet people that you'll just never forget. And that's what I did in this story. So you think you've heard the whole story? Well, Tom Juno said there was a lot of information he was able to include in the print version of this story that he couldn't fit into the documentary. You can watch the entire documentary on ESPN's streaming service, and we have a link to the print version in the 207 section of our website and mobile app.